happy holidays tea people. It's the seventh day of our 24 days of tea and it's time to find out what's behind door number seven. Vanilla cappuccino and honey with matcha tea powder. So vanilla cappuccino has apple, black tea, rose hips, candied pineapple, which is pineapple and sugar, coffee beans, natural coffee flavoring with stevia extract, artificial cream and vanilla flavoring. And this is honey with matcha green tea. So here's how we're going to rate these teas. We're going to rate each out of 100 points for dry leaf appearance, 20, infused leaf appearance, 10, fragrance or aroma of the infusion, 20, the color and look of the liqueur in the cup, 10, and most importantly, flavor, taste and aromas, 40, for a total of 100. Since these matches all look pretty much identical, we're only going to rate on four categories. The dry matcha aroma and taste, 20 points. The fragrance and aroma of the beverage, 20 points. The flavor and mouthfeel, most important, 40. And is it matcha for the final 20 points for a total of 100. So with the matcha, the reason I put is it matcha in there is because these are all matcha drink mixes for the most part. So it'll be interesting to take a look at whether or not the matcha flavor is totally lost or actually complemented by the flavors they put in there. Let's start with the vanilla cappuccino. According to David's Tea, it's the gift of breakfast for those of you who have coffee with breakfast, I guess. So these kind of teas that are um, black tea or pu'er laced with coffee are known as dirty teas because they are dirty by being laced with coffee. Mm. Trying a bit of the tea leaf here. It's very hard. It seems maybe a little more moist than it should be, but maybe that's some of the other ingredients effect. So we'll steep it at 95 degrees Celsius for about three minutes and then check and see how it turns out. Okay, so our vanilla cappuccino has been steeping for about three minutes. That seems kind of strange because if it's a cappuccino, it should probably be brewing, right? Anyway, let's take a look and see what we've got. It looks like something somewhere between coffee and tea. Oh, like a dark, whoa, those coffee beans smell strong. Definitely getting the scent of coffee. Okay, so I'm definitely getting the vanilla cappuccino, but I'm getting a vanilla cappuccino that's been sweetened with stevia and is weaker than an actual cappuccino because there's only like four coffee beans in the whole blend. This is one of those times where it probably would have been better for them to go with real sugar. So what's interesting about this honey matcha is that it really smells a lot more like matcha than honey. Honey usually has such a distinct smell, it kind of makes me wonder how much honey to matcha they put in here because it's really strong of matcha. Oh, that is decadent. Honey and matcha together, the perfect pairing. I'm definitely going to be making some of this with matcha powder that I have once I run through it. Just the idea of sweetening a matcha like this, or rather, <laughs> matcha -ing a honey like this, I guess would be a little bit more accurate. And then using that either to sweeten your matcha, or to sweeten like again matcha, or something like that, that might be matcha dusted if you don't have a matcha dusted one. Or even just as a cooking ingredient, I think this would make some amazing ice cream. I definitely want to try that. You get that honey flavor, you also get that matcha flavor. It smells like matcha, not like honey. And I think it extends the matcha's shelf life. Not that you're going to steep this per se, but... It doesn't mix in super well, but you know, honey, honey's kind of like that. It tends to stick to the spoon. I don't know that the matcha really has any effect either way. <laughs> now I get a bit of taste of green tea, which was kind of to be expected, but... The honey and pinch of matcha overwhelms the flavor of the stevia, which is much nicer than the stevia aftertaste. Now I'm getting kind of a honeyed aftertaste. My problem with these dirty teas is that I like stuff strong. Oolongs, things that are multiple steeped, those kind of teas that have very delicate flavors and lots going on, I can have them weak. And I can still pick out different flavors and things like that. But for coffee, I expect it to be really coffee flavored. For tea, black tea, I expect it to be really robust. 
it's black tea after all. If I'm gonna have something like that, I want it to be strong. For me, I'd give this maybe like a 55. I know that's not a great score. I don't like the stevia aftertaste. I don't like that it smells like coffee beans but doesn't have that strong coffee flavor. It doesn't have the robustness of a black tea. Now, if you added more sugar to cover the stevia and some milk froth, yeah, it would be a nice warm beverage. But if I wanted something to wake me up and it says it's breakfast in a cup, I expect a little bit more. This, on the other hand, was fantastic. I'm definitely gonna be making some of this up myself with some matcha powder that I have. I'm actually excited to try. I think some of the flavors in here, I might try mixing in with honey to make different things uh, and different baked goods and just to spread on things because it's really delicious. So, big win. Thanks so much for watching. That was day seven of the 24 days of tea and 24 days of matcha. My name's Carolise with Tea Crazed. If you enjoyed the show, please check out our Facebook group at facebook.com slash groups slash tea crazed. And please like and subscribe and hit the bell button. Did you like this? Did you hate it? Do you have ideas for what I could do with the matcha honey? Let me know in the comments. And again, thank you so much for watching. Remember, if you drink tea, Flick the pinky. Bye for now.